Hallelujah. 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 God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. I can't believe I've been here for 12 years. It looks like it's only a few weeks. And it's, it's not an easy thing to, to say bye-bye in any way. I am humbled. I want to thank my pastor and Amai, the church board, for the support that they have given me and my family. They have made me the person that you see today. When I came to Mukhoditsane, I was not what I am today. But I am thankful for the leadership of this church. I am thankful for the support from this church. All of you, in different ways, you have made me and my family better people. It is my prayer that where we are going, we duplicate or do better than Muhodzani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when you are taught, you can only be what you have been taught or better. So it is our prayer that through you praying with us, the Lord will make you proud where we are going. Because our failure is your failure and our success is your success. We are very thankful. My wife will be saying something later. She's attending to something now. Uh, so I thank you. And uh, I've always wondered why people cry when they are going, but I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but it is, it is indeed uh, something that touches our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good even if we are going to Mabutsani. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the will of God that we are here this morning speaking the way we are speaking. And it is the will of God that we are here in 2021 declaring victory over Corona. Hallelujah. Because we are the called out ones. When you are called out, it means you have a purpose. You have a mission. Hallelujah. Before I get excited, this is prayer man. We are praying. So I have been given an opportunity to preach. Uh, and I'm very thankful, Murut. You know, some places they will just tell you bye-bye and that's it. But being the father that you are, because you see, a leader is, is someone who is more than just an ordinary person. They see beyond. They, they can actually read your mind. You see, Muzala, my pastor, Bore Robert, there, there are times that they will just come to me and say, ah, what's going on? You, you, you are lost. They are leaders. So I am going to talk about unveiling weapons of prayer. Because we are praying. So I want us to understand that prayer is warfare. Because prayer is warfare, you need weapons. And when you have got the weapons, you need to know how to use them. Because some people might have weapons and are still victims. I might have weapons and I become a victim. You see, we fight so many battles at different fronts. So many battles. Some are family. Some are national. Some are work-related. They are battles. But we use different weapons for each battle. You know, I, I've seen my wife. She's not here, so I, I can say anything. I've seen my wife in the kitchen struggling with flies when the insect spray has run out, trying to hit them with, I don't know what you call that thing for hitting flies. It is a weapon for a particular warfare. That weapon can only be used for a fly. And when she sees a rat outside, she doesn't look for the weapon, she calls me. Hallelujah. So every war is a different strategy. And the strategy of each war brings victory if you understand. But if you and me don't understand, we might lose when we have the weapons. I'm going to read from Ephesians 6, verse 6, I mean uh, Ephesians 6 from 10 to 18. 
Hallelujah. We want to fight with understanding. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. I'm going to read. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mighty. Finally, my brethren, do, do you hear this statement? It means we have come from somewhere. Now, finally, we need to be, hallelujah, to be strong in the Lord. Why do we have to be strong in the Lord? Because we are fighting. And the war that we are fighting, number 11 says, put on the armor. Now that you are strong, now that you are in his power, put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand. I could have been asked to stand in the first verse, number 10. And then never says, put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand. I can ask you to stand, but if you are not armed, your position might not give you the victory that you desire. We, we have been praying, and this is a season of fulfillment. We can only be fulfilled when we stand strong and when we are dressed in the armor of God. Hallelujah. And when we are dressed in this armor, for we do not wrestle. I like this one. Why do you have to put on this armor? Because the enemy that you are fighting is not a rat. The enemy that you are fighting is not a fly. The enemy that you are fighting is not a cockroach. It needs you to be strong. We are wrestling. Hallelujah. Number 12 said, against flesh. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness against spiritual wickedness in high places. So these enemies that we are fighting, we cannot win if we are not putting on the whole armor. Some people have been soldiers here. You know, when you are a soldier, whether you have a nice suit or a nice dress, they don't want to see it in the camp. They can only see it when you are going home. But when you are on duty, you put on a camouflage. That camouflage is telling you that where you are is warfare. January is telling you it's prayer. I, I don't know how you have been taking your Januaries from the time that I have known you. But this January is warfare. Because the enemy called Corona is waiting. It needs someone who is dressed properly. Yes, we have to mask. Yes, we have to sanitize. Yes, we have to keep social distance. But we must pray. And when we pray with understanding, the words that we say, the relationship that we have with our God will give us the victory that we desire. We cannot have victory if we are going to a red with a weapon that we are using for a fly. Hallelujah. This is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare needs us to use the weapon, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is my prayer this morning that the Lord will challenge us to a different dimension of prayer. A prayer that is effective. A prayer of a person who has a vision. There is a verse in the Bible that says, where there is... I think it's Proverbs 29, 18. I want to talk of a vision. When we have a vision, as intercessors, as children of God, we know where we are going. Vision means we have a purpose. Vision means we have a goal. Vision means we have something that we want to achieve. So we are not just praying anyhow, because we are standing against powers and principalities of darkness. But the Lord has transferred you and me from the kingdom of darkness to light. You were not transferred to enjoy the light. You were transferred to transfer the light. 
to others. Did you find Proverbs 29, 18? I don't want people to think I'm speaking because we need to have a vision. But there are so many things that come into play. I'm still reading. That will make us understand what we have to put on. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Hallelujah. But that keepeth the law happy is he. I want the first part. Where there is no vision, people perish. You cannot pray without a vision. And the perishing doesn't mean you are dying. The perishing that is being referred to here is you are not effective. Because some people are there, but they are perished. Some churches are there, but they have perished. Some fathers are there, but they have perished. They have no effect. They don't know their purpose. They have no vision. What does it mean to be a father? What does it mean to be an intercessor? What does it mean to be a Christian? Do you know? Do I know? When we have a vision, we pray differently. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. You see, in verse 12, in verse 11, it says, put on the armor. Now it says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God. A soldier can go to war with their camouflage and their satchel and no gun. He is not putting on the whole armor. He is incomplete. There are some of us who are incomplete. Hallelujah. This one is serious business. Some of us are not complete. We need to put on the whole armor. Not part of it. You don't have to worship and end there. You don't have to intercede and end there. You don't have to preach and end there. You don't have to be an usher and end there. But put on the whole armor. The whole armor. You, you can't go, you can't come here to church with one shoe. You, you can't go out of your house without complete attire. I mean, we come to church, we pray for people, things don't happen because you are putting on part of the armor. I'm afraid I'm going to say this one. We have prayed things have not happened. Because we are not putting on the whole armor. Hallelujah. The weapons of our prayer is the word of God. The weapons of our prayer is the name of Jesus. That we were being told about last week. That when we use the name of Jesus, we conquer. When we use the word of, Je the, word of the Lord, we conquer. When we worship. Worship can be in giving. Worship can be in service. We have to put on the whole armor. For us to be effective. Stand therefore. Having your loins guided about the truth. Yeah. We, 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 we're trying to dress ourselves this morning. And this scripture says, stand therefore. Being guided by the, with the truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. When we talk of truth, truth is what makes you. Because what you know, like now I know I am preaching and you are listening. The truth that I know is everyone is watching me. Unless you are sleeping. Hallelujah. So we, the truth that we want to put on the whole armor is the truth to ourselves. Let's be truthful to ourselves this morning. Are we where God wants us to be? Because if we have to put on the armor, we must be truthful about ourselves and about God. You know, truth is a prerequisite to any battle. You can't go to war with a fellow soldier who is a liar. You can't go to war with a fellow fighter who is not truthful, who doesn't tell you what is happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we have been adopted into sonship. 
This adoption is for you and me to be in the army of God. If you don't know about adoption, what it means, it means you are being taken from Zola to a better place. It can be anyway, but if you are coming from Zola, you are going somewhere better. I, I want you to understand that when you have the truth, then you become better. I am talking about adoption. If you want to know that adoption can make you a victorious soldier, go and ask Brother Moses. Hallelujah. Brother Moses was floating in the river Nile. Hallelujah. No direction, no identity, nothing. The crocodiles are waiting to have lunch. But adoption came to Moses. And things changed. Hallelujah. Moses is from the river to the palace. And now Moses has changed identity. Because he has been adopted by Pharaoh. The adoption that Moses got gave him the education that everybody would have, they ever needed during that time. So the adoption that you and me have is better than what Moses got. We have been adopted into sonship. So this adoption is the truth that makes you put on the whole armor and the devil and command sicknesses and they go because you understand adoption. Hallelujah. When you are adopted, that means you are changing your name. And when I have changed my name, I change my language. It means now I am speaking the word. It is only the word of God. That is made, because the family that I have joined, the army that I have joined, needs me to speak. We will tell you, don't speak like you were speaking in Zola. Don't, don't be offended. I'm just giving this for us to understand. Don't speak like you are speaking in Mkhodzane. Because now we are in Khabaroni North. Don't speak like you are speaking in Mkhodzane. Now we are in Mabutan. There is always, when you are adopted, there is a language that family uses. Hallelujah. Truth. We have to be honest to ourselves. We have to be honest to God. John 8, 31 to 32 says, if you abide in my word, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. When you abide in his word, you are in the army that conquers. You are in the army that understands the truth. You are in the army that understands. Because the other part that we read in verse 13 talks about righteousness. Righteousness means you are in the right place with God. It means a right position. You cannot be in an army and be on the wrong side of the commander. Never. Unless you are a dissident. You are a rebel. And commanders don't keep rebels in their army. Hallelujah. I, I, I am moving. You see, now I can look at the watch. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the truth Righteousness is what makes us the army, the army of God that is dressed properly. Hallelujah. And when we abide in the word, when we abide in the word, some says the entrance of thy word brings light and understanding. So when you have light and you have understanding, you have the truth. You cannot be deceived. Why we are being deceived? There is something entering, not the word. So we need to be dressed this year so that we can see our season of fulfillment. Who doesn't want a season of fulfillment? Hallelujah. We all want to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. God is good this morning as he dresses us. As he dresses us. And now when we understand the truth, it's easy for you and me to go out. Let me read 15. And your feet huh? showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now you understand. Do you know a person who doesn't understand is not at peace? Kuriela, you see, this one is not understanding because they have no peace. 
But here it says, when you understand, you can now go out with the gospel of peace and start telling people that this Jesus that I'm talking about is the Prince of Peace. He is Jehovah Shalom. He can calm your storms. I say it because I understand, because I have the truth. Hallelujah. And I can only have the truth when I am in the right place with God. That is righteousness. Hallelujah. And when I'm righteous with God, I take on my bazooka, which is the sword of the spirit, and I start destroying. Hallelujah. Whatever comes before me, because I have the sword, if I give you a sword and you don't understand, you will use it to harm yourself. But now that we have truth, we have righteousness, we are preaching peace, we can now take the sword, the sword of the spirit, and we start firing. Hallelujah. You see, our confidence in all this is not, it is not in what I do or what I you do. It is in our position. In God. The grace that God gave Moses. You see, when Moses went to the wilderness and they came back to deliver the children of Israel, he had excuses. I can't do it, God, I stammer. He's not the only one. There is Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah? Jeremiah who said, I am a youth. I can do it. They, they are always, I, I'm talking of, of warfare here. Moses has been given a mission to deliver people. But because he's not understanding something, he comes out with an excuse that I am stammering. When you have the truth, when you understand, you not have an excuse. So that means Moses had some internal wars. Besides what God was sending him to do, he had his own personal issues that were limiting him to go forward and do the purpose. Maybe you have the same. Maybe I have the same. There are internal battles that are whispering to you, that are whispering to me. Much as people see me putting on a camouflage, but inside the camouflage, there are battles that are limiting me to go out and proclaim what God wants me. I have, I, people can see me coming to church. People can see me preaching. But there are internal battles within me that are telling me you don't qualify because you have done ABC. There are secrets that we have kept. We have children that our families don't know about. Oh my God. We have children that we have given fathers to say they are theirs when they are not. We have rejected some people. These are internal battles that when you kneel down to pray, something reminds you of the abortion that you did before you were born again. Something reminds you of the stealing that you did before you were born again. Something comes to you and says, you don't qualify. Moses did it. He said, Father, I stammer. Maybe we have not been effective. We, every time you try to put on your armor, something tells you it's not matching. You see, when... My wife has to start dressing one hour before we leave. Because if something is not matching, we are not getting out of the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's not here, don't tell her. So, I, I am saying, when something is not right with you, you can't go out and proclaim victory to someone. Because the devil, the one who condemns, is reminding you that you did you killed, you stole, you lied, you are not worthy. But I am glad John comes 10.10 10, says, the devil only comes to kill, steal and destroy. But I have come that you might have peace. <laughs> I don't care what the devil has been saying to you. Today, you are putting on the whole armor. To go out and conquer. You are putting on the whole armor. Because of your position. Because of my position. We are more than conquerors. 
Whatever the enemy has said to you and me is not going to stop us. Hallelujah. This is a season of fulfillment. A season. You know, a season. Good season. I have known Christmas as a season of giving. When I don't have money, my children will just tell me, Dad, where are you buying our clothes this year? It's a season that they know something is going to happen. Now, as a church, we are expecting a revival. We are expecting a season of joy, a season of service, a season of ministry. This season can only come when we are not condemned. Don't allow the devil to take the armor away from you. Hallelujah. Don't allow the devil to whisper anything to you that does not talk about victory. I like the book of Colossians. Colossians 3, I'm not going to read it. 8 to 13. Our pastor has preached, has taught, has counseled. I mean, he has spoken to individuals about this same scripture. Now that you are a new man, I'm talking of dressing here. Now that the camouflage that you are putting, the armor that you are putting on, only works when newness has come out. If you are going to dress the way you are, you are going to, we are going to see the camouflage, but inside, there are internal wars. But only when we become new, that sicknesses will go. Barrenness will go. Hallelujah. 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. What causes internal battles is the mind. The mind has to be saved. The helmet of salvation comes to your head. So that your mind can be renewed. And when your mind is renewed, my mind is renewed, we can now take the sword of the Spirit. And the last verse, which is 18, talks about prayer. Now we can pray. Because we understand that we are adopted, we are chosen, we are forgiven, we are sons. So whatever we do is out of the position. Moses could speak like a prince when he was in Pharaoh's house because he was adopted. You are adopted into this kingdom that allows you to speak like a prince, that allows you to declare things are not as though they are and they become. Hallelujah. But most of us, because of the battles within us, we have become like the men in John 5, verse 6 to 7. The man was at a pool where there was healing. He is there. And Jesus comes. And he asks him, do you want? And the guy says, he is not answering. Do you want to be healed? Ah, no, Jesus. There's no one to push me. I didn't ask all those questions, okay? I'm not asking about your internal battles. I'm not asking about your background. I'm not asking about where you have been. I'm not asking about what you have done. But do you want this morning to be made well? Do you want this morning to be dressed? Do you want this morning to take off your filthy garments? Hallelujah. There was a time when, uh, is it, who was told to take off their filthy garments? Nehemiah, Jeremiah. Oh, I'm, let me see. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about taking off filthy garments. It means when you are dressed in a certain way, you cannot qualify. So we have to take off filthy garments. And these garments, like I'm talking about the man in John 5, that you are saying to Jesus, there is no one to push me. This morning, I don't know what your internal battles have been. I don't know what has been whispered to you to stop you to do what the Lord wants you to do. As I am going to be handing over to the pastor, I want you to pray and say, God, there are parts of me 
that do not understand the spiritual realm. Because it seems scary. When you just think of commanding a demon and it goes, you can't understand. It looks so scary. When you try to put on this armor, the devil reminds you of your past. When you try to put on this armor, the devil reminds you of what you have done to your fellow brother. But this morning, do you want to conquer? Do you want to have a different prayer that will give you a season of fulfillment? Hallelujah. We are going to pray and say, God, those parts of me that do not understand the spiritual realm, that make me not put on the whole armor, oh God, help me as I hand over to the pastor. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise.